Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, COVID-19 concerns. It is exhausting. The message local hospitals are sharing amid a first-of-its-kind policy. Why one restaurant is requiring proof of vaccinations. Plus... Ida has officially become a hurricane and continues to track towards the Gulf Coast. What that could mean for us next week coming up. And the heart of Appalachian music. The fiddle and the banjo really brings you back to the mountains. We're taking you to two iconic spots in your town. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Lindsay Ward. It doesn't seem like the surge in COVID-19 cases will be slowing down anytime soon. 10 News reporter Annie Schroeder is working for you tonight to explain how this could once again put a strain on our local hospitals. Healthcare leaders across Southwest Virginia say this current surge in COVID-19 cases was entirely preventable. Medical providers are tired, um, also angry angry that um, they continue to risk their life. Nearly 300 people across our region are hospitalized for COVID-19. Medical facilities like Silva Health are left evaluating their capacity by the hour. Um, we know things change rapidly. We want to make sure that we're still able to provide care for those people that aren't COVID patients. Most health care providers say the average age of COVID patients is decreasing by the day. 18 year olds have come in and, and needed uh, aggressive interventions, um, also had patients in their 30s and 40s on life support and, and not make it. We're not surprised by that there would be an uptick What's concerned us is the severity of, of the uptick. Dr. Carnell Cooper, chief medical officer at Lewis Gale Medical Center, says he wants to provide all the resources he can for his staff as they combat another surge. It is exhausting, and I continue to talk to them about making sure they protect themselves and they do things themselves to prevent them from, from burnout as well. Health leaders expect cases to continue to rise over the next few weeks, and while they do not want to discourage anyone from going to the hospital, they say the vaccine is the best way to lower cases and move past the pandemic. Have the resources we need, but we're concerned about just its impact on our community and our staff. Annie Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. Dozens of schools are dealing with outbreaks because of the rising infections. Liberty University is implementing a campus-wide quarantine starting on Monday, and that's frustrating some students. Leaders are calling the next two weeks a temporary mitigation period. Classes will be online, large indoor gatherings are suspended, and dining locations will be takeout only until September the 10th. I'm upset. I mean, of course I'm glad that steps are being taken to protect the students' welfare. But to be honest, this is a slapstick measure. If we had just taken some really simple steps, we could have avoided this whole issue. And we'll tell you why one student is now taking action tonight on 10 News at 7. It's a move that some consider controversial. A restaurant in Huddleston is now asking customers to show their COVID vaccination cards before stepping inside. New tonight at 6, 10 News reporter Alexis Davila finds out why the owner wants to take this extra precaution. The Landing restaurant in Huddleston posted a sign on their door Wednesday. Customers are now required to show a COVID vaccination card before entering. The owner of the restaurant, Tiffany Silva, says after seeing the rise in Delta variant cases affecting the area, she is worried about the safety of her 20 member staff. They are our family. We spend more time with them than we do with anyone else. Um, and you would want to protect your family just as we want to protect our staff, their families, um, and really it's our community as a whole. Due to the pandemic, Silva helped launch the Landing Love Project to help feed families in Franklin and Bedford counties. After serving more than 100,000 meals to families in need, she doesn't want the virus to spread and affect the feeding program too. And, and people become infected or they're put in a situation where they can't come to work, they can't go to school, it starts hurting resources. If we were unable to come into work because we had COVID within our restaurant, we would stop our feeding program, which feeds every single week. Last year, Silva says they closed their restaurant because the vaccine was not an option back then. She says she just wants to prioritize safety again and take precautionary measures. I just want to keep everybody as safe as I can. In Huddleston, Alexis Davila, 10 News, working for you. 
Turning now to the forecast tonight, meteorologist Eleni Warden is here to show us when we could see a cool down in temperatures along with the impacts of Hurricane Ida that was yes. upgraded today. Yes, absolutely, and it's continuing to strengthen slowly but surely, which something that we'll have to watch very closely at this point, still a Category 1 hurricane with winds of 80 miles per hour. However, now the National Hurricane Center is forecasting this storm to make landfall as a major Category 4 hurricane, so something that, of course, we are going to be watching very closely here over the next several days, making some pretty good headway moving to the northwest at 15 miles per hour. Now back here at home, we're also dealing with some storms. Those have helped some of us to cool down, which I know is a big relief after all of these hot days with temperatures in the 90s. We do still have some light rain extending throughout portions of Roanoke down towards Boone's Mill. That stronger storm that's been situated over your region has been weakening. Also still some moderate rain, though, at times, whereas Floyd, your storm has really not been moving all that much, producing a lot of heavy rainfall, even some lightning. So we'll continue to keep a close eye on this. I'll bring you more updates coming up. Lindsay. Gun violence is still a big problem in the Star City. That's why Virginia's attorney general spoke with Roanoke leaders today. 10 News reporter Sydney Jacksheimer shares some of the ideas that could help curb crime, especially among young people. Since the start of 2021, the city of Roanoke has seen 46 reported shootings, one of which took place Friday morning. At the same time, just down the road, Attorney General Mark Herring and Roanoke City leaders were talking about ways to prevent gun violence. They've been working on this issue. They've got plans together. They're working in collaboration with one another. thought that was really powerful. Roanoke's Chief of Police Sam Roman says they work with schools to educate students about the dangers of guns and violence, echoing the need for collaboration. It's not an overnight solution. It is an over year and in some cases years solution. So I'm confident at what I saw. I'm not surprised by what I saw today because what I like about the region is we are always willing to come together, partner and move the needle forward toward the solution. Along with collaboration is the need for funding. Roanoke recently received two grants from the Department of Justice, one of which helped to support last week's gun buyback program, which officials think is a step in the right direction. How easily accessible guns are for our youth and how to address that. We have to do some work on researching how kids are getting access to guns, uh, giving kids opportunities, safe opportunities to turn those in. City leaders are hoping for additional long-term funding to come from the AG's office, which would be used to help with gun violence prevention programs. Reporting in Roanoke, Sydney Jacksheimer, 10 News, working for you. Flags are flying at half staff across Virginia in honor of U.S. service members and other victims killed in the Kabul airport attack. Nearly 14,000 Afghan refugees have now entered the Commonwealth, according to Governor Ralph Northam. He says they're landing and being processed at Dulles Airport before moving to military bases. This is one of the largest airlifts uh, in history, and uh, Virginia has a very important and, and critical role when we have something onset of this. The, the operation, no doubt, is very complex. There are a lot of moving parts. The governor hopes to have more information on the number of refugees in the coming days. Coming up, helping homeless veterans get back on their feet. After serving their country, we are happy and proud to serve them. It's making a difference. WSLS 10 in your town, sponsored by Bank of Botetourt. We're back on the road in Floyd County. 10 News anchors John Carlin and Brittany McGraw are live to explain why this area is known for its Appalachian music. Guys, I expect to see some flat footing at some point from you guys tonight. <laughs> you probably Boy, won't probably won't see that from us. Hope you're not too disappointed, <laughs> but, but there will be some flat footing here, just not from us. People don't need to see that. Somebody <laughs> might get hurt. We, we are here at the Floyd Country Store. We're actually on the stage right now, looking back at all the people who have come in, and they'll be here, uh, I'm sure, among the large crowd enjoying the show here tonight. Yeah, so at 6.30, the Friday night jamboree starts, and instead of it being inside, uh, because of COVID protocol, it is going to be in the backyard, and hopefully we had some rain come through. It's clearing up a but little bit. But it is bit, clearing yeah. up, so we're expecting a good time tonight. But here at the Floyd Country Store, this isn't the only place that is known for the mountain music here in town. In fact, 
the you'll find the lar the world's largest selection of bluegrass and old time recordings at the county sales record store, which is just around the corner. Yeah, this shop has thousands of CDs and records that you can choose from. There's a selection of local artists as well, which is very popular up here. And the business is run by musicians who are very happy to offer guidance. You know, they come in and they say, I want something with a banjo on it. And so we'll often point them to the local kind of music because um, there's just so, so much great local music in southwest Virginia. It's also been in the community for more than 50 years and counting. So when you think Floyd, you definitely think music. There's just music everywhere. Music everywhere. People were warm. Before it started raining, people were warming up out on the street mm -hmm. and tapping their feet. And it's just a great place to be. It's a great vibe on a Friday night. Yes. Yeah, so speaking of this rain, the stormy weather that we've been seeing, right. we want to send things over to meteorologist Delaney Warden. Luckily, things are going to start improving for us here shortly. I'll have more details on that. Plus, we are tracking Hurricane Ida, what that means for you next week coming up. In your Feel Good Friday, a new program is helping homeless veterans gain independence. Thanks to a generous donation, more than $21,000 is going to Arches Trust House in Roanoke. It will help pay upfront costs as they transition out of a shelter and into their own homes. This includes security deposits, rent support, or even a bed to sleep in. Staff say they're proud to serve those who have served our country. Watching them get back to work start that savings, work with case management to learn how to budget again, and then graduate into the housing program. It's just so rewarding to just have them feel that sense of confidence again. Arch hopes they can continue this scholarship program beyond the year. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Even though we have seen some storms fire up today, not nearly as widespread as what we've seen the past few days. And although one of those storms was severe, no longer the case for us. In fact, all of that rain has been weakening very quickly, though we do have that one storm that Brittany was mentioning over near Floyd, dropping some very heavy rain. It's not severe, but it could produce a little bit of localized flooding given how slow it is moving. So yes, it is starting to move off towards the northeast. You shouldn't have to deal with it for too much longer, but still something to take note of if you are headed out to Floyd for this evening. 6 p.m. Things are going to be clearing up for us now that we are towards 11 p.m. We are going to be staying much calmer, much quieter than we did here over the past few days. So that rain moving out a lot faster by the time we head towards lunch for tomorrow. Isolated showers and storms once again hitting hitting the repeat button. I feel like I sound like a broken record a little bit, but it is that time of year. Those storms could be on the stronger side given the the heat and humidity having enough instability in our atmosphere. Most of those storms, though, will be gone by about 8 p.m. Then we head out to the tropics. Again, really something we're going to be talking about a lot here over the next few days. Hurricane Ida is at still with those sustained winds of 80 miles per hour, gusting upwards of 100 miles per hour and moving to the northwest at about 15. So this is still near Cuba, just off to the western portions of there. However, as it inches closer towards the Gulf Coast, towards Louisiana, Louisiana, Mississippi. It is expected to strengthen to a category four hurricane, something we're going to have to monitor very closely. And of course, this could come on the 16th anniversary of Katrina hitting New Orleans. So then we watch it move towards our region. It is going to weaken fairly quickly, but still could bring us some widespread rain. And that's certainly looking to be the case. Now we will be watching this storm system, certainly praying for those who are in Louisiana back towards Mississippi. Already many hurricane watches and warnings along with tropical storm watches and warnings. Very significant situation that is likely to be going on there. Now our temperatures are really all over the place. We're ranging from the mid 70s to the low to mid 90s. Our warm spot is in Lynchburg at 93 degrees. That's of course because you've been able to stay dry, whereas those who have seen rain much cooler. 75 for both with Withville and Hillsville here in Roanoke. We had a brief downpour that has brought those temperatures down to 81 degrees after reaching into the low 90s early 
earlier this afternoon. So 60s and 70s by tomorrow morning, a very similar pattern to what we've dealt with for tomorrow afternoon. The heat humidity helping to fuel more storms. So pretty much the 90s across the entire board. Tomorrow is definitely going to be one of our hottest days over the next few. Your seven day forecast keeps us in the 90s through Monday. From there, we're watching Ida very closely for Wednesday with lower temperatures. I Abby. All right, Delaney, a long overdue honor for NASCAR legend Wendell Scott's family coming this weekend. We'll hear from them, and the curtain goes up on the fall football season tonight. We'll go live to our game of the week at Stinger Stadium. Sports is next. And now, the Freedom First Sports Desk with John Apicello. First and 10 returns tonight, my 16th season, and the first time we've cranked up this merry-go-round for two rides in one year. Game of the week, two playoff programs just four months ago get together tonight in 10 sports. Eric Johnson is the man for the job. Eric's at Stinger Stadium, but my guess is offense could very well rule tonight. Eric. That's exactly right, Appy. And as you know, it's one of the shortest off seasons we've had for high school football. Coaches calling it both a blessing and a curse. For one, there was no time to forget your plays and assignments, but also there was no time to really get in the weight room, which is why the Bees and the Patriots are both coming out tonight, hoping to set the tone early to start the season. Uh, I think we've got a good football team, but we are very young, playing a lot of sophomores, um, a lot of juniors. So, uh, you know, it's, we should get better as we go. PH is coming off a region semifinals appearance in the rough and rugged region 5D. While quarterback and first and 10 player of the week, Roy Gunn is now at VMI, the players say the buy-in, attention to detail, is at a higher level. We've been more in tune with what our coaches are saying and listening to our teammates. You know, every every practice at the end, it's it's not, the coach doesn't have the last word. It's, it's one of the leaders on the team that's really, you know, bringing everybody up. As for the Bees, they're still buzzing from the performance of first and 10 player of the week, Drake McDaniel at the quarterback spot who's ready to take command in his junior season. We lost some quality. We lost, we lost some really, really good ball players, but uh, we're looking at several youngins, you know, to step in and fill, fill their shoes. We had really good leadership last year. I think playing last year, um, having them kind of mentor us, I think it got us in a better situation now. And as for tonight, the goal is simple. Just play every game like it's our last, enjoy every moment. We're going to have to go and take it. They're not going to give it to us, especially on their home turf. And while the personnel may be different for both sides, coaches say we shouldn't expect any drastic changes. So as we know, these is two teams that really like to air it out. We should expect no different come tonight. Of course, highlights and reaction coming up on the debut of the fall edition of First and Ten tonight at 11, 10 p.m. But for now, we're live in Brookville. Eric Johnson, 10 Sports. All right, thanks, Eric. And we do have a busy night tonight. Full slate of week one collisions and a lot of playoff teams colliding. Keep an eye on Heritage at William Fleming. Brooke Leonard will be breaking that one down. Salem's got a perennial power from West Virginia and Galax and Glenver. And on it goes. It's all coming at 11:10. All right, it's a presentation that is 58 years in the making, but Wendell Scott's family will finally get the trophy for his 1963 victory at Jacksonville. It will happen prior to the Coke 0400 at Daytona this weekend. Scott, the only black driver to win a NASCAR race at the sport's highest level, and he's a 2015 Hall of Fame inductee. The historic moment wasn't celebrated in the way that it should have been. It is certainly one of the most iconic and monumental moments in American stock car racing history, but dare I say even motorsports history. This will lay a, a really solid foundation to build on. Not saying they don't have a foundation now, but of course, this is the one thing that, uh, you know, we get it right. You know, I'm probably just saying when you, when you learn better, you do better. Well, and it's great. It's going to happen at Daytona. Oh, I know. That's such a big platform and big stage. There you go. All right, NBC Nightly News is coming up next, and we'll see you back here at 7.